you just skip it? You just skip it? No, I talked to her mom. <laughs> so. um, all right, everybody. A couple things. One is, it's good to be back. I missed you guys. Me too. Pastor Jared taught the last couple classes because I was not available. So last week, last time, two weeks ago when you had class, I was in Arizona visiting my son and daughter-in-law. My son's a pastor there, so that was kind of fun. I got to go to his church and worship and see the desert and cactuses and stuff, so that was nice. Um, you are here, Conway. Yeah. All right. Here's a good spot right here. Take off the hat. No. Do it. I like it. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about what you learned the last couple sessions with Pastor Jared, and then we're going to dive into the Seventh Commandment tonight. Um, and then, did anybody do a devotion the last two classes yes. when I was gone? Who was it? I did it, but I think it was the last time Pastor Jared was here. Meet him? Brother. So I thought you did it with Pastor Jared. Yeah. You must have Maybe. done it with Pastor Jared because I didn't have you Maybe. marked off. Ooh, okay. He did it though. He got caught lying. Oh, fuck, fuck. I had to. So, Ashlyn. <laughs> so, who would like to do theirs at the end of class today? <laughs> you already did yours. <laughs> Yeah. All right, Liam will be doing the devotion tonight. So just a reminder, all of you will get to have that opportunity through the course of the year. So do not lose your devotions that you've written, and if you haven't written them, that you'll need to do that. Let's start with a prayer. Let's pray. Lord God, thanks for bringing us together today. Thank you for the blessing of being able to study the commandments. As we work our way through them, we are reminded of how you have intended blessing for our life by giving those, those guardrails um, uh, to protect us and bless us. Uh, help us in our understanding, and may we honor you in our words, our actions, and our thoughts. In Jesus' name. So, we are, like, over halfway through the month of November. I know, it's hard to believe. And so that by this point, by the end of November, you should have three worship reports done. One for September, one for October, one for November. Um, so I'm still waiting for a few from some of you, unless you handed them in tonight. Conway, have you done any worship reports when you go to church? Filled out any yet? Um, I'm going to do one tomorrow because I'm acolyting. You're acolyting tomorrow for the deer hunter service? Mm -hmm. Jake, I'll not catch plays. I'll be at a basketball game. So. Okay. All right. Perfect opportunity to get going on those, but every time you come to church, you got to do it to catch up. So, yeah, we have a deer hunter service tomorrow night and Thursday night, 6.30. Next week, there's a Thanksgiving Eve service Wednesday night. Another opportunity to do a worship report besides Saturday and Sunday. And then in the month of December, we have a couple <coughs> Advent services on Wednesday. Please. Do you have a question? Caleb, I need a worship report from you. Have you had done any yet, Caleb? Um, yeah, they're at my house. They need to somehow make their way from Elko to Anago. Maybe jumping down the Pony Express or something they can get down there. Um, let's see. Aubrey, I talked with you already. Izzy. Ooh. 
That sounds like a third commandment issue to me. You know, here's the cool thing about you, Izzy, is you live close enough to actually, like, walk over it. Or you could talk to a friend, like Aubrey, and say, hey, when your family comes over for church, could you pick me up? And they would be like, we would love to. So, there are ways to get here. Um, Sawyer, I think I only have one from you. Reese? Oh, you handed one in? So that would be number two. All right, so anyway, just stay on top of it, all right, guys? Okay. Oh, by the way, nice job with the thank you letters for your parents. If you have not given the, the letter to your parents, Thanksgiving would be the perfect opportunity. You know, it's a day to give thanks. The letter was a thanks to your parents for what they do. That would be a nice time to present it to them and say, you know what, Mom and Dad, I love you. Thank you. Or maybe it's just Mom, maybe it's just Dad, maybe it's Stepmom, Stepdad, whoever it is, Grandma and Grandpa, whoever's caring for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we want to review a little bit uh, where we're at. We're at the Seventh Commandment. So, can somebody please give me the First Commandment? Ash. No other gods. Right, so you, you guys took a little quiz now. Everybody, I believe, has passed the quiz, except for Lily, who's not here. Not you, Lily, the other Lily. And she's going to take it when she's not sick, I guess. Anyway. You shall have no other gods. What's it about, Ashley? Like, what's the... Yeah, what's what's our false idols? We don't have Baal hanging out here. Yeah, anything that gets in the way between our relationship and God and becomes more important to us than God. Right. So, keeping God first, priorities. Second commandment. Yes, so we do not misuse the name of the Lord. What is that about? In your own words. Not cussing by his name or lying by it. Yep, so not using, just throwing it around like a piece of garbage. The word Jesus, God, Lord, Christ. But honoring it because it does, that name represents the true God. Right? So we want to honor it and use it correctly. Like when we pray or Talk about our faith to others. Third commandment. What's that mean? In your own words. Does it have to be a specific day, like Saturday or Sunday? Yeah, just one day a week. Right, could be any day. So taking time to rest from our labors um, and worship God. Fourth commandment. Izzy. Honor your father and mother. Excellent. And what is that about? Is, is that commandment just about our parents? What about other authorities? Like, like police officers, government, government. government. teachers, your neighbor. Na your neighbor could be your authority, I suppose. Any other places of authority? How about here? In a church. Pastors are authorities, church leaders, principals. Yeah. 
You know, but here's, I think a challenge for you guys and your generation is authority has been kind of like disrespected a lot lately. Oh, yeah. I'd say over the last 50 years. And it just has, people don't understand respect anymore. Just respect for each other for, as being human beings. So if you can practice respect, you can really be a great influence on other people around you. So think about that. If you have an online presence, social media, if you, how you interact with other friends or classmates, you can treat them with respect, or you cannot break this command. Okay, so, honor your father and mother, fifth commandment. Pastor Jared taught this. You shall not murder. And what is that about? Like. Just don't go out and murder somebody, I suppose, but what else? How does it apply to you? Um, not like to hurt anybody. Yeah. So what are we supposed to respect? And specifically in this commandment, I would say respect life, right? Life. And I don't know how much you guys got into it, but if, if you read this part in the catechism, it's talking about respecting the lives of others, um, especially if they can't defend themselves. So respecting young life, respecting babies. Respecting life even before it's born, like unborn baby life. So, not having an abortion. Respecting elderly life. People in the nursing home. People that, you know, can't function as well and maybe are costing a lot of money to keep alive. We respect that life too, right? Life is life. We don't say that, oh, somebody who's really successful and rich, or somebody who has a really high IQ, or somebody who is a really good athlete and plays in you know, some professional sports league, is worth so much more than, well, you know, the average everyday person working at a factory, or whatever, a farmer, or whatever it might be. But the truth is, all life, all life is Important and God given, right? God's creator of all life. So that means your life too, by the way. Your life, respecting how you treat yourself. Um, so this commandment speaks against things like suicide, drug abuse, you know, stuff like that. All right, so anyway, life, right? Life is important. Sixth commandment, last time, what'd you guys study? You shall not. You shall not steal. No, that's not. Dang it. You shall not commit adultery. So, what is that about? What's the commandment about? Max? That's a, uh, it's probably a very even keeled way to put it. <laughs> but yes, respecting marriage as God's boundary for sexual relationships. Right? And so, marriage is really the key to that commandment. And the relationships within marriage. Um, and by the way, you guys are at a point in your life. This is like, confirmation I think is always a good spot for 7th and 8th graders because you are about to make a lot of important decisions in life. As you get into high school, beyond high school, whatever decisions you make, you know, whether you go to college, whether you go to tech school, whether you go to military, where you, if you go in the workforce, or if you just live in your parents' basement for the rest of your life, whatever decision you make, those are big decisions. 
and you're going to start to become probably interested in other people. Maybe have a boyfriend or girlfriend. And then you'll be making decisions about what to do and what not to do. So this commandment is about keeping the guardrails on. And by the way, and this means respecting others because if you don't keep the guardrails on, then you're disrespecting the other person. And especially, um, maybe girls to some extent, but maybe guys too, you have to be careful. Oh, yeah. Because some guys operate without guardrails. And you got to protect yourself and your relationships. Hit them with that pepper spray. <laughs> Don't touch me. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Any questions about any of those commandments up to this point that you wanted to chat about? Okay, not hearing anything, we're going to go on. We're going to deal with the seventh commandment, so find that sheet in your book. It should say, seventh commandment. Stop hitting me! Number ten. Already there. Okay, we're going to start this one by looking down uh, where it says in bold print the seventh commandment. And I want you to find the seventh commandment in your catechism and its meaning, Luther's meaning, and write it down there where it says seventh commandment and meaning in the catechism. See that spot? So find it. Find it in your catechism. You can look in the front or you can look in the explanation part. Locate it. Write it down. Yeah, in the explanation part, it's on page 105. In the box. I want you to write down the whole works. The commandment, you shall not steal. And also the meaning. What does this mean? I don't have that space. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, you might have to write on the back of the sheet to get it all in. It's just one long sentence. We should fear and love God so that we do not take our neighbor's money or possessions or get them in any dishonest way. But help him to improve and protect his property or his possessions and income. One long sentence. Because I want you to learn this. You will need to know this when you get when you take your test. At the end of the commandments, we'll have a final test. Which is going to be on December 15th, which is a Sunday, because we're going to have class on Sunday. Two Sundays, actually, the 8th and the 15th of December. That's the end until after Christmas. And then after Christmas, then we come back on Wednesdays. But there's, there's no lift classes in December. What? Yeah, I know. There is, because we have Advent services, two Wednesday nights, and then there's also uh, Junior High Youth is going to have the Christmas party, which was on that sheet that you guys were handing out to each other. I did not go on. Pass those around. But that's on the Wednesday, the 11th. So we, you know, it'd be fun to come to that. So our classes are going to be on the 8th and 15th at 9.15. A gift exchange? Does that mean we have to bring a gift? Yes, it does. Can I bring, like, whatever? If you keep reading, it says... Just read the whole thing. It'll tell you. I need to read that right Oh, $15. 
Once again, the commandments themselves, ladies and gentlemen, are not that difficult to remember because they're pretty short. You shall not steal. You shall not steal. That's pretty short, right? You shall not steal. Four words. <laughs> in, in Hebrew, it's only two words. You shall not is all one word. Or actually, you shall is one word, and then not steal is I don't do that. Yeah. For us, it's four words, but you can, you know, you can remember these, right? Because when you take your final test on the Ten Commandments, I'm going to ask you what all the commandments are, and you should know the meanings. Um, and again, each of the meanings is about one sentence. You guys can handle it. You are smart enough. I know you by this point to handle it. Um, and there's always a little bit more to it than you might think. And I think that's the, the true, that's true about this one too. For instance, okay, this one is about not stealing. So what are things that you are not supposed to do in this commandment? Steal. Steal. Like um, stealing what? Oh. Or how? Money, like how stealing? Like pickpocketing. <laughs> okay. Pickpocketing. So don't be a pickpocket. What else? Stealing his prize plate of glass. Oh. Any other serious comments? How about like shoplifting? Oh yeah, don't I'm not a shoplifter. I I'm, I'm just kidding. Oh yeah, that's stealing. How about Oh, bank robber. Yes. So being a bank robber, that's definitely stealing. Here's up, give me your stealing belt. It's stealing, isn't it? Oh, this thing. I guess it is. <laughs> turn to page 106. Just turn the page. 106. Flip the page. Question 79 says, how do we fear and love God in keeping the seventh commandment? We fear and love God by not taking God's <laughs> earthly gifts from our neighbor in such ways as A, you can underline this, stealing our neighbor's possession and money. By the way, Judas, one of the 12 disciples, stole money out of the money bag that was people donated for Jesus' ministry. He would help himself. Um, don't worry about it. Just remember it. So stealing can be obvious things like taking things that aren't ours. But what about not so obvious? Look at letter B. Being lazy or sloppy when working as employees. I <laughs> have. stealing your employees. Not So I knew this. When I was your age, I went to a party that my parents went to because I was their child. And uh, there were some people, adults, talking. And some of them worked at a factory. And this was in Eau Claire. And uh, they were talking about how, you know, when the, the person who was in charge, the supervisor, was not looking, that they just would stop working. You know, they would just kind of stand around and not do anything. Because if you work too fast, then you would get the other people in trouble because they weren't working as fast. And so they were all trying to help each other by not really working very well well <laughs> by slacking off in other words and you tell a woman I did not I did not but I thought hmm is that right and the answer is no that's really kind of stealing from the employer who is paying you to work and if you're just slacking off and not you know trying to get away with stuff well 
That's stealing. How about letter C, acquiring goods by dishonesty, fraud, or taking advantage of others? So about 30 years ago, I was a pastor in Florida, and I was there when Hurricane Andrew came through, which was a big hurricane that hit Miami. And my, my city was north of Miami. It was called Hollywood, Florida, where I had my church. And we had 100-mile-an-hour winds, and it knocked everybody's power out, took trees out, blew some roofs off people's houses. Thankfully, my house was okay. But people knew that the power was out, and the water, because the power is out, the water doesn't work. And so you're out of water, and you're out of refrigeration. And if you live in South Florida, where the temperature is 95 degrees, and it's 95% humidity, people are sweating it out. Right? So people would fill their van with ice bags. They would buy up in Georgia for 99 cents a piece. And they'd come down to South Florida and they would sell them for 10 bucks a piece. That's because a people thing. needed ice. And they're making a buck. Now people paid it because they needed the ice. But that would be breaking the seventh commandment. I mean, that is cheating somebody. So this commandment applies to cheating. People out of stuff. Or let's take this example. Let's say you're taking a test and you didn't study. And your friend that's sitting next to you, well, they studied. They studied and they're actually a really good student. And you know that you aren't doing well. And you're... You kind of let your eye wander over to their piece of paper. And you borrow a few answers off their sheet and you write them down on yours. Is that stealing? Yes. Wait a second. If they were kind enough to allow you to see their answers on their test, that's not really stealing then, is it? No, it is. Oh, yeah, it is. It says, yeah. It's being dishonest, right? Oh, by the way, if you cheat in homework or you cheat on a test in school or something like that, you know who you're really hurting? Exactly. Because guess what? If you don't learn the material, you're only hurting yourself down the road. Things only get more difficult in school. So if you don't learn the stuff at this age, guess what? Next year, it's going to be worse. So you're only putting yourself back. So sometimes you just kind of take the punishment for not studying, and you learn from it, and you move on. You know, you do better next time. But don't cheat, because that really hurts you. Plus, it's a sin. Uh, look at the bottom of page 106. We fear and love God by looking after our neighbor's well-being, by helping to protect and improve our neighbor's Oh, So this commandment, like every commandment, has a negative and positive sign, Caleb. So the negative side is when you're actually cheating or stealing or doing those kind of things. But the positive side is we're actually expected to help people with their property or in their time of need. So you can keep the seventh commandment by actually helping somebody when they need some help, when they might need some extra clothing or a meal or transportation. <laughs> or some ice. Ice. What if you actually went down, filled your car up with ice bags, and then just gave it out for free? That'd be ultimate or That'd be like That'd keeping be money. the seventh man, right? So does that mean, like, when... Like, if I went and bought ice bags for 99 cents, and then if I went and sold them for $2, is that still breaking it? <laughs> you will have to struggle with that and come up with a decision. Okay. There's my answer. What? Because at some point you cross the line of being deceptive, and you're just soaking people with, for money in their time of... Question. What if I did, what if 99 cents? Can I make it a dollar? 
Moving on. Troy, that's one cent made. So. Okay, let's go back to the top of your sheet. It says in the yellow, we're not going to watch that little video clip. Um, have any of you ever watched The Lord of the Rings trilogy? The Lord of the Rings, it's about the guys in search of the, the ring. I've heard of it. I've seen the books. Anyway, there's a little video clip in there that explained a little bit about stewards, but I thought that most of you probably didn't watch it, so I'm not trying to do it. Um, it would be just take longer to explain the clip. So, anyway, the word steward, you can write this down. Is steward. Oh, by the way, anybody know? What is a steward? It's on your paper. It's right here. First yellow. You said in the yellow. Somebody who manages things that belong to someone else. Somebody who manages things that belong to someone else. That's a steward. What? You're so weird. Now, I want you to open your Bible and turn to Psalm 24, verse 1. This is down farther on your sheet there. Psalm 24, verse 1. No. Make sure you have that definition down. Okay, Psalm 24, verse 1. Can somebody read it, please? Reese, do you have it? Why? Four, verse one. Reese, when you have it, read it. What is it? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms. Psalm twenty-four, verse one. When you find it, I want you to write it down on your paper. It is right there on your paper, Psalm 24, verse 1. Yo, where'd my pencil go? Write it out. Well, that's 72. I got it. Where'd you put my pencil? Find it in your Bible, write it down in your paper. Where is it? It's on your paper. Psalm 24, verse 1. Sit. Write it out once you find it. Levi, did you write it out? No, I have not. I'm not. Okay, let's listen. Reese is going to read it.
Hey, uh, what version is that? That is it that mine? Is it mine? It's just above. Like ESV. Like says something. Got an ESV. I read. Yeah, I think you guys have ESVs. So, the NAB says it a little bit more clearly, but it says the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all who live in it. Okay, Reese, based on that Bible verse, who owns everything? The Lord. Right. Now look at the definition. If a steward is someone who manages things that belong to someone else, what are we stewards of? That's one thing we're a steward of, the earth. By the way, what does it mean to be a steward of the earth? To manage the earth. What? No. We're stewards of God's things. Oh, yeah. God's the owner, we're the managers. Okay? So if we're stewarding the earth, what does that mean maybe about caring for the earth? What does it mean about pollution? What does it mean about farming practices? Having good farming practices, right? We want to be good stewards of the earth, right? We want to take care of the resources. Um, by the, by the way, what does that say about hunting practices? Yeah, we follow the rules. Yeah. So we don't go out and you know, shoot a bunch of deer that you don't have tags for. And That's illegal. That kind of stuff. Yeah, it's illegal. Yeah, good job. Plus it's bad story. Actually, I'm in the spot. Okay, back to the Bible verse. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Who owns you? God is. Okay, so God, God is your creator. He gave you the breath of life. And guess what? You're stewarding yourself. You're managing you. And anything entrusted to your care. So what do you actually own? You. What do you own? Nothing. Right, everything belongs to God. We just manage it. So you might have some, maybe you've been given something. Clothes. I don't know. PlayStation. Xbox. Stuff. Whatever stuff you have, you really honestly don't own it. You're just managing it because when you leave this earth, where does it go? Let's say that you become a billionaire. And you own all this stuff. When you die, where does it go? You manage what you have while you're here, but then it passes on to somebody else to manage, right? And it always belongs to God. Okay, so if we are to manage what God has given us to his glory, that says something about what we do with our stuff, right? Okay, look on your sheet. Uh, why is stewardship important? The second question there in yellow. Why is it important? Based on what we just talked about. Stewardship means the act of being a steward. Okay? So managing stuff. Why is managing stuff important? Who do we answer to? 
I mean, we could answer to our parents. We could answer to other authorities. But ultimately, we answer to God, right? When it's all said and done, wouldn't it be cool if when you get to heaven, after, when you die, and you get to heaven and God says to you what he says in the Bible to some people, well done, good and faithful servant. I've entrusted you with stuff, and you managed it well to my glory for God's purposes. So, by the way, so that means, like your family, let's say, I'm just going to guess that a lot of you are going to grow up, you're going to get married, you're going to have family. Managing your family well to the glory of God, not just living for yourself, but using your resources to help others, wouldn't that be a fantastic kind of life? Like, wow, that's a life I would want to live. Instead of just Oh, get whatever I can get out of it and die. That would be depressing life. (laughs) Right? So why is stewardship important? Can somebody give me a good answer for that? Yeah. And we're doing it for God. We're doing it for God. Not just for ourselves. Okay. Uh, Underneath, in the middle of the page, it says the seventh commandment does not just address finances, money, but also the spiritual issue behind it. In what ways are our finances supposed to be affected by our relationship with God? Can anybody tell me the story of the guy in the Bible named Gehazi? I was at the service. I think. Uh-huh. I heard that name in church. I think Aubrey can. Because she was sitting right in front oh, of me yeah, when I talked yeah. about it. Oh, um, so it was about these. I forgot their names, but it was about these two people. One helped. So there was a prophet by yeah, the name of. Right. Anybody name the, remember the prophet's name? Elisha. And he had a kind of a guy who helped him, and his name was Gehazi. And he, he, um, I remember, no, don't like, call him, call him the exact, I know it. No, I know it. I know it. I know it. Max? What happened? The Gehazi. What did Elisha do first? He, Elisha healed somebody. He healed, um, somebody that was very, Yes. The general of the Syrian army. Does anybody remember his name? It was my little brother. Oh, I remember the story. What was his name? Okay, his name was Naaman. Naaman. I was giving you a clue. We'll try to. So, Elisha healed the guy named Naaman. He was a general in the Syrian army. He was very rich. He brought all these riches down, silver and gold and fancy clothes. And he was going to give them to Elisha because Elisha healed him of leprosy. And what did Elisha say? No. No. Sure. Heal him. He said no. he walked away. Why did he say no? What? Why did he say no? You don't need to pay me. Aubrey? Because the Lord's gifts are free. God gave his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for free. You don't have to pay for it. Forgiveness is free. God's love is free. Mercy is free. Healing is free. You don't have to pay for it. So Elisha didn't accept any payment. But then what did Gehazi do? Gehazi ran after him. And he said, he told a lie. He said, there's a couple young prophets that could use some help. Why don't you give me like 150 pounds of silver, please? Or no, 75 pounds of silver. And then Naaman said, no, here, take 150 pounds. Sure, I'm thankful that I got healed. 
What happened to Gehazi? He hit, he hit the money in his house, and what happened? He went back. And he went to Elijah, and he, and he asked him, and then Elijah asked him where he was, and then he lied, lied again. And then Elijah gave him leprosy. Ooh, it's like the reverse miracle. Like, Naaman was cured of leprosy, which is this disease that just rots your skin away. And your skin looks white and flakes off. Instead, Gehazi got leprosy. As a miracle, reversed. Like, oh, you're going to get leprosy now. Because he was greedy. Okay, open your Bible to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 19. Luke 19, are you there? Okay, I'm waiting for you to turn Luke 19. Lena, Luke 19. Levi. Levi. Luke 19. Luke 19. Matthew, Mark. Sawyer, do you have a Bible? Don't throw the out of the world. Hey, did it? Thank you. Oh, okay. she that girl. Who would like to read out loud? Anybody? Who would like to read out loud? What verse? Aubrey? You want to read out loud? Sure. Luke 19, starting at verse 1. Just start reading. 19, you just said 10. Jericho. 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 Zacchaeus. Okay, stop there. We learned a couple things about Zacchaeus. He was short. What else did we learn? He's wealthy. Third thing, he's a tax collector. What does that mean? Do people like him or not? They hate him. How did he make his money? Stealing money from other people. The overcharging people, that's how tax collectors made their money. Everybody hated them. But here's the other thing. Tax collectors were Jewish people, and they worked for the Roman government, and the Jews hated the Romans. Romans. So when a tax collector worked for the Roman government, they were hated by the Jews, even though they were Jewish. They had no friends, but they were rich. So they had each other. So their friends were each other. Who wrote the gospel according to St. Matthew? I just told you the answer. St. Matthew. Matthew. What was his occupation? He was a tax collector. He was hated by everybody, but Jesus chose him to be a disciple. If you ever watch on TV, um, The Chosen, the series The Chosen, just watch how the other disciples treat Matthew. Because they don't trust him because he's a tax collector. But or he was. Now he's a follower. But he always had a little book with him and he was writing things down. 
And that became the Gospel of Matthew. Yes. Well, like tax themselves. I don't know. Okay, moving on. Verse four. Would someone else like to read? Verse 4. Keep on going. So you're going to head and find the sycamore fig tree. Yep. You see him. Since Jesus was coming that way, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up. He looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus. 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 Come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down. So I thought about this story. So I had a chance to be in Jericho. Jericho is like an oasis in the desert. There's palm trees and there's a water source there. That's why there's a city. Otherwise there wouldn't be a city because it's just desolate desert. Rocks and sand and it's hot. But they have these nice palm trees and there's other trees that grow there. And apparently there's some sycamore fig trees that grow there. And so I could just imagine Zacchaeus, short guy, I'm not going to see Jesus. Everybody's taller than me. So I'm going to run up ahead and climb that tree. Climbs up the tree. Jesus sees him in the tree. And he says, Zacchaeus, come on down because I'm going to your house today. And everybody else, the whole crowd around Jesus are like, can you believe it? He's going to Zacchaeus' house. That guy is such a sinner. He's such a scoundrel. I can't believe Jesus would go to his... Can you guys believe it? Mutter, 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 mutter. So they're muttering. Let's see what happens. I'm going to start reading. Verse 8. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor. If I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too, T-O-O, -O, meaning also, this man also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Look at your sheet. What does the question say? The seventh commandment does not just address finances, but also spiritual issue behind it. In what ways are our finances supposed to be affected by relationship with God? How was Zacchaeus' finances affected by his relationship to Jesus? When Jesus chose him to show that he loved him and he wanted Zacchaeus to be a follower, even though everybody's muttering like, oh, Zacchaeus is such a scumbag. Could you imagine? Like you're outcast from society and Jesus looks at you. And he says, I want you to follow me. I don't care what people say. Zacchaeus was so overcome with joy and thankfulness. What did he do with his possessions? Threw them away. Really? Gave them away. Gave half his stuff to the poor, and then he said, if I cheated anybody, I'm going to repay him four times. He must have been really wealthy. So he's giving his stuff away. If you truly believe that you are loved by God and that he gave his life for you so that you could live with him forever in heaven, you have a whole different perspective on money. Yeah. Money isn't just about pleasure. You know, whatever you can whatever toys you can buy with it. You know, by the way, adults are just like you guys when it comes to toys. They just get more they're expensive. just they're just more expensive. We just have adult toys. So it's not just about oh I you know if I just had 
a new car or a new snowmobile or a new ATV, UTV, whatever, I would just be happy finally. I'll finally be happy. Now, sorry, doesn't <laughs> money doesn't buy you happiness, right? No. Jesus, knowing Jesus gives true joy. And then you say, you know what, God? How can I use my stuff to, to help people? How can I sh show other people your love by using my resources? So being a good steward of our finances is just a result of knowing Jesus. So, by the way, this weekend, if you come to church at any of our services, tomorrow night, Saturday night, Sunday morning, 8 and 1030, we do a commitment, a uh, little commitment thing at the end of each service. It's our, called our commitment weekend. So people receive this little card in the mail, and it says, I commit myself to the three P's of peace. Praise, prepare, produce. Praise means worship. I want to worship God regularly. Prepare means I want to continue to grow and learn God's word. Produce means I want to live a Christian life. And then there's also a chance to say, and I want to use my resources, my finances, to benefit the Lord's work. So people can write an amount down and the blank if they want to, of here's much, how much money I think I'm going to give in the next year. And by the way, that helps us think about our budget too here and things like that. But one of the most joyful things I found for my life, and this took me a while to figure out, by the way. I didn't figure it out at your age. It took me till probably I was about 20 years old to figure it out that, wow, the more I give back to God, the happier like I am about my money. <laughs> and I don't feel so selfish about like, oh, I just wish I had more money. No. I actually feel good about helping God's purposes and doing things to help him. And so, anyway, if you get to the point, and the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver, of just being joyful about what you give, it actually increases what you give. But if you do it because you think, well, okay, I got to do this because I'm a member of the church, or I got to do this because we got to pay the light bill, or pay our teachers at peace, or whatever it is, then we're doing it for the wrong reason. But if we do it because God has been really generous to me and he actually gave his son for me on the cross, paid for my sins, that changes my attitude, right? Then I want to do something. Same, by the way, not just finances. This goes for all of life. I want to live my life for God. I don't want to be selfish and just do whatever I think, you know, because that usually ends up in disappointment. So there's a little bit of encouragement for your future. Um, okay, we've got a few minutes left before we have our closing devotion. Um, yes, from Liam. Um, let's see. Any questions, by the way, about that? Max. Yes, quickly. 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 We're almost done. Are we supposed to answer the two questions? Look at the next question. It says, when we think we own stuff, sometimes that stuff ends up owning or controlling us. How have you seen this to be true in your life and in the lives of those around you? Have you ever got to the point where you felt like stuff was controlling you? Caleb, Reese. Let me put it this way. What's your most precious possession? What's the thing? Here, I'll give you an example before you answer this. So, you know how we used to have vicars here? Yeah. Oh, by the way, Izzy, do you remember Vicar Mike? Vicar Mike had a beard, and his office was across the hall from, like, the first and second grade rooms. Did you come to child care here? No. You were in third grade when you started here? Okay, then you might not remember him. Uh, 
He was like about six years ago. So maybe you aren't here yet. But he had a dark beard. He was kind of my size. But he knew. He knew everybody's name. Yeah. He knew your names. And I talked to him today, by the way. And he's doing well. He lives down in Wausau. He's a pastor in Wausau. So anyway. But we had another vicar. This was before you guys would remember. The very first vicar. This was like 10 years ago. And he had, he liked to play golf. And he had golf clubs. And he had some nice golf clubs. So one time, Mr. Reinecke and I went golfing with the vicar. And we were out golfing at Riverview. And I said, uh, is it okay if I borrow your driver to tee off? Because it looks really nice. And I'd like to just see how it feels. You know what he said? No. I don't let anyone use my golf clubs. That's kind of weird. So then Mr. Reinecke and I played a prank on him. And he got mad. So I probably... Let oh, God prank. control my sinful oh, nature. Prank. <laughs> well, the prank was he went to use the outhouse that was out there, the plastic porta potty, oh, yeah. and then we threw golf balls at it oh, <laughs> while he was inside. So it was that probably wasn't the right thing. So the moral of the story is, don't be greedy. So anyway, do you have something that is so precious to you, you won't ever let anyone else touch it? Uh, yes. A possible $20,000 basketball court. It's a Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan? Original rookie season? Or? I will touch it. Like, I will touch all tops in 1993. 93-94. Oh. Nice. During their championship run. Jake, I will touch it. Um, so, the warning is I'll touch it when I find it. Don't let your stuff control you. Because it's just tough. It's just tough. Right? I have to control you. Okay, if you look at the bottom of the page, it says we are stewards of time, talents, treasure. Okay? So just. So, just to help you understand that. Why is that four T's? So you remember that, the three T's. You all have the same amount of time in life, well, in each day. Let's put it that way. You got 24 hours in a day. So the way you steward your time is important. There's a whole lot of time wasters that people have today. Number one is probably right here. Just imagine life. Some of you imagine this because you don't have a phone, but imagine life without your phone. It's not that bad. Yeah, but I can't yeah, play games. I can only take. It's only a thing. Yeah, Jake. Treasure. Safari. Hey guys, just a couple minutes here. So treasure would be like our money stuff, stuff like that. Talent means, hey, you're all, you're all been created by God with specific talents, abilities, spiritual gifts. They're also, you know, you can waste your talents, or you can use them for God's glory. So be a good steward of your talents. One last thing before the devotion. Why? Have a seat. We're not done yet. Hockey can wait. Before you go, I want you to write down on the second page your own uh, answer to that question that's highlighted. Dan. I want you to write down on the second page your answer to the question that's highlighted right now. I believe you.
This is this is summarizing basically everything we just talked about tonight. Okay. Okay, you can put your things away and Liam. Have a seat. We're gonna listen to Liam. As soon as it's quiet. Why do you have a whole Conway. Everybody sit down. Liam's gonna stand up. Right here. Yes, to be in on camera. Conway. Respect. So, Ephesians 4. Ephesians. Yeah, sure. Ephesians. Four, yep. Chapter 4, 32. Um, I picked this Bible verse because it reminds me to be kind and nice to all the other people. This also helps me remind to be kind when I'm playing sports. The commandment reads, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Please pray with me. Dear God, please help me and me to be kind and compassionate to one another and forgive as you have forgiven me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. One last thing. Next time we meet, it's going to be Sunday, December 8th, 9.15 in this room. Between the two church services. 9.15 in this room. December 8th. All right. See ya.